Welcome, welcome everybody. This is Mike at night. How are you all doing? Hope you all doing well. Hope you all had a wonderful week thus far. Right? We right up to um the point where we are the Thursday. The week is almost finished. The month is halfway through. What a thing. Let me welcome all those who join in us. Let me welcome um, Candice Alexander. And I've seen my usual Charmaine. For some reason, Charmaine is not on. And Candice, you, you beat her to it. All right. Let me ask you to share the live, people. Share the live, everybody. Just press share and let it go on your page or your profile. Call somebody and say, listen, Micah Knight is on. We're going to talk some stuff tonight. We're supposed to have some people, some guys joining us. As you know, they have a busy schedule. And hopefully they'll be on before the night is out. But we're going to go anyway. Because we're going to help you to understand tonight some of the challenges that we have with boys and raising boys, etc. Um, we're also going to play a, a launch song or International Men's Day song. Today is World Day of the Boy Child. I hope you know that. And you need to know that. World Day of the Boy Child is today, the 16th of May. Every year, the 16th of May, we celebrate World Day of the Boy Child. And um, we're going to be looking forward to that. Okay, all right. Let's see now what's going down, people. Um, as we come on board, I know that we started a bit early. So people coming on for the 8 o'clock timeline, but I wanted to make an early start on this one. Yes. Uh, so um, if you know of somebody who may have a son and want to get the information, please ask them to join us. Good evening, Joy. Thank you for joining us. Good shot. Appreciate having you. All right. Um, so do you all have sons? If you do have a son, just post and let me know. Yes, I have a son. How old is your son? If you could remember the age. So if you have a son, post your son. Let me know that in the affirmative and let me know what is the age of your son. All right. So while we wait on the live for people to come on board, um let me let me tell you that we're going to launch a song tonight um that was written for international men's day um i am the ambassador for world day of the boy child and also the ambassador for the international men's day this song was written by a, a girl i think her name is sherry's allen where is she from i think she's from antigua if i'm not mistaken she, um Cherise Allen, but it was really put together in song and the all of that musical input and uh, talent was done by a good friend of mine, um, Ted Jones. Uh, Ted Jones is one of those friends my father used to see. When, they, talking about people, when they are up, they are up. When they are down, they are down. And when they are halfway up, they neither up nor down. <laughs> he's one of them friends. When he good, he good. And when he bad, he bad. And when he halfway up, he neither good nor bad. But he's a talented one that brought out the song and, and gave life to it. Um, and so we're happy to bring that to you this evening. Uh, let me, uh, so you'll be hearing that in just a while. I just want to make sure we have enough people on to be able to hear it. Zanifa. Howard, good evening to you. Nice, nice, nice having you, man, Zanifa. All right. Okay, I see Ted saying she's a monster rat. That's right, that's right. Hey, Ted, join us, but I thought he said he was busy tonight. All right. Joan, hey, Joan, if I tell you, because I was looking for you last week, you know, the little pa coming in and they're just falling and wasting. I don't know how to get it on to you. Um, so I don't know. We might have to work out something. 
All right, Joy says she has a son. He is 32 years. He will be 33 this month. Okay, Joy. Good, good. We ask him if you have a son, just post the son and let us know how old his son is. Um, Charmaine, I was saying at the beginning of the program, I'm surprised that Candice Alexander beat you to it. You're coming real late today. But we did start a bit early. I wanted to get a head start. Candice has a son, 26 years old. Okay, wonderful. All right, nicely. So, in a while, we're going to start the song. Um, I'm joined by my co-host, Rondell Fields. He's on. Uh, so, we will chat with him in just a while. Um we're going to go to him and um, chat when, when the time, when we go across there. Okay. I think what we could do is go to the song. We have enough people on. All right. Okay, Ted. Th thank you very much. All right. Let me go to the song now that we have that um, was pulled together by, by Ted and um, a wonderful song. So let's see if we could give you a chance to appreciate it as we go there now. Okay, so here it is, my people. Mikey, baby, this is another bill. I know. Mikey, another bill that you haven't paid. Baby, I have it under control. Mikey, you always have stuff under control. Baby, let me go in. No, 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 no. I should have listened to people when they tell me no. Like, God forget where you live. Because I'm fed up. I'm fed up. I'm fed up. I'm fed up of this. You only have me feeling like I am mouse in house. Right you, right you, right you. People outside laughing me, girl. 15 years we're together, and it's only rah, 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 rah. They need to learn me. To learn me. Standing up against the harmful stereotypes that have been perpetrated against the men. I come here to represent myself and a few. We live in a century where we live in on lies. Society said the hurdles and we have to comply. We don't pay with news, we don't get reviews. Not for we get broken and we fall into the news. But this year all the brothers said we're gonna take a stand. Representing hope, revealing the brand. We're gonna take a brother hand in hand. Empower, elevate every boy, every man.
Okay, that was our theme song for International Men's Day, put together by Mr. Ted himself and Cherise and the entire team that we have. Let me welcome in the studio, um, I see him with a heavy red background, boy. Mr. <laughs> Rundell Fields. Rundell Fields is the spokesman for men that we have. Let me welcome you, sir. We're glad to have you on board. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I don't know what you're holding to the colors in my background for. <laughs> <laughs> Ray boy. So, um, John, uh, all right. Yes, yeah, yeah, I see people saying great job. Thank you, Diane. Lyndon, good evening to you all. Um, yes, yes. And John, that little part. Um, you, you have to settle a thing between my wife and I, you know. My wife gets upset when I'm leaning over a sink in the kitchen, eating mango, because she <laughs> finds I should be sitting at a table eating the mango with a knife peeling it. And somehow or the other, I never grew up like that, eating that either on a back step, you sit down with a bucket, or you lean over a sink. This kind of thing <laughs> about sitting down with knife. But Randall, what is your experience with that boy? Well, my experience is that people in my house that eat mango like you too. So, <laughs> so that's, that's what I have after I've seen. I'm not a I mean, mango lover myself, but I've custom seen mango being destroyed in similar fashion to your, to your expression. Boy, that does make it taste better, boy. Some of the other, this, when, you peel, when, you, when you peel it with a knife. Nah, you just have yeah. to take it. It's like a pull that. It has changed yeah. the taste. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you see, John say never a knife. Oh, we will use knife, knife on, a, on a mango. <laughs> He's an idiot. Anyway, so um, we we talking about men. We, today I had a wonderful experience. Um, you were on television this morning also with us, and you you prosecuted the case for men and mm. this disenfranchisement that we have when it comes to boys and so on where they're advancing um girls at the yes. expense of boys so, so talk, talk to us a bit about that so share with this particular audience even though you did it so well this morning yeah mike good night good night to you again and good night to your audience and boy I, 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 this is such a, a critical topic and as, as I would have mentioned this morning and times before, what surprises me more than anything else, Michael, is that this is being cheered on as a great accomplishment, as a great achievement, as something fantastic. The abandonment of boys, the leaving mm. out of boys out of educational programs, out of innovative programs, out of programs that with technological advancement is important, like mm. ICT development, artificial yes. intelligence, robotics. These things, boys are being purposely left out of these things that we deem in society as the leadership, the leadership programs in society. Boys are purposely being withdrawn from it. And when you ask for a reasoning, even though it's never backed up by statistic, the perception, and I love the point you all brought across, which it seems to be an emotional perception that men are ahead of women in every department. So definitely, it is the emotive feeling that boys automatically will be more advanced than girls. Mm. Without the statistic, they even back that notion. People right. have extracted boys out of these very important programs in a modern society like this. Taking, mm. Making boys ICT illiterate in a society where ICT is so important. Technology is so important. Social media is a new form of media. Look at the way we could interact now. Back in the days, the only way we could have, we saw this type of interaction is when we was watching Jetsons. You could remember Jetsons yes. on TV. What are we doing here now? We as boys marveled at it. But this is this is the boys of today's reality. 
and we are seeing them being left out of the opportunity to learn or, 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 or to access free programs that are being offered in our modern day society just because they are male. And I could only remember two times this took place in our history as human beings, well, at least within the last hundred years, that is. And that is when a particular type of man would have ostracized women, because I always do blame that on all men. And another time, again, when a particular race ostracizes another, we are now saying that we must leave boys behind to advance skills. And the notion of it, Michael, is foolish. Are you right. to say then to me, in nations where young girls, as we know that we have heard of some Middle Eastern nations, where young girls were not allowed to go to school, let us say that schooling for young girls are introduced. You're going yeah. to stop the boys from going to school now? Mm. So the girls can go to school? The right. only way to balance imbalance is to create opportunity for all. Not to exclude one and start the other. That is creating yes. another imbalance. So it is to me a frightening thing. And to me, it is one of the root causes for young boys now becoming so negatively, easily negatively motivated. For young boys now seeking or finding interest in the negatively influential things in our society today, whether it be the music, whether it be sitting down on the block, whether it be the, the lack of motivation to go between be, behind academic achievement, whether it be the lack of motivation to even look for employment, whether it be the lack of motivation to learn a skill, whether mm. it be lack, it is because we in society are unconcerned of getting boys seriously involved in the, 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 the programs and in the innovative um, programs, educational programs that will truly help them have the right mindset for leadership. It is, it is illegal right now for a boy to want to be a leader in society, apparently. Let, let me tell you that you are so on point with this. I was looking for the advertisement where mm. there is an international organization mm. that is offering 100 women mm. a scholarship to go and advance themselves in a field that boys can also participate in. And you mm. have restricted it only to women. Why is that so? You understand? Correct. Now, if therefore that was the what was taking place in the past, why are we repeating this now and saying that we're doing this in the name of trying to get the women to, to catch up? Correct. So too far east is west. Correct. And, and the thing is this, Michael, people fail to realize something about particularly discouraging your, your, your males in society. You know, I always pitch to that point. A negatively influenced male is a dangerous thing to your society. Yes, yes, we yes. Say because of his physical construct or whatever. But a negative influenced male is a dangerous thing to society. And I always say, one of the only things that could bring a negatively influenced male, whether it is to rehabilitate him or whether it is to reprimand him, is a positively influenced male. When mm -hmm. a society becomes imbalanced and the negatively influenced male starts yeah. to power the positively influenced male, all the academics and all the achievements, even the women have worked so hard to acquire, will be all not and lost, you know, because they mm. can't come outside to enjoy anything you would have worked for. You can't do anything because those that are negatively charged will have you under siege. And that is why that African proverb is so powerful. The boys at the village reject will burn it down to feel its warmth. And that is right. very, very, very factual. Yeah. Let me just read a couple of things here from the uh, Facebook. 
Judge Stewart is saying children, women, and animals are loved unconditionally. Men are only loved for their worth and what they can provide. And then mm. we have um, Charmaine asking a question. Who is really responsible for young boys falling through the cracks? Definitely. Um, and the, I, I would say this social trend and the, and the failure of our leaders to not see it, and even if they see it, not stand against it. You don't have to follow every trend. And I commend a master that I heard recently. I heard the story of a master of the court. She, she just recently had retired. When a particular, um, I did not call the name, when, when a particular international agency came to promote a particular program to only advance it to benefit young ladies within the judiciary, she stopped them. And she said, in our diaspora, women have been given equal opportunity to men. And in this country, I cannot understand the rhetoric you want to pass here today. And she is one of the few that stand up against that. I have seen men who are afraid to say the same. And this is what I'm saying, Michael. Persons in leadership positions must understand the danger that they put society in when there's that level of inequity. Whether the inequity comes between races, whether it becomes between economic standing, or whether it becomes whether it comes be, be, between gender, that is a dangerous principle. Mm. And we, for some reason, because it is trending in foreign nations, have been cheering it on as great accomplishments and now reaping the rewards of the young men who are falling through the cracks. If you allow me again, to make mention yes. of something I saw, Michael. And I really wanted it to post it in our IMD chat. But because it was gruesome, I didn't post it. One person that I have seen persistently showing interest in young boys is the gang leader. He is persistent in showing negative interest. Eh? You want the shoes? You're hungry? All the baits and all the ploys to learn me to keep him under him. So much that even in a video I saw today in Tobago, Michael, is there? Hello? I think Michael get cut off there, boy. I think I see. Jerome, you here? Dr. Taylor? Yeah, Ronald. Ronald, I'm here. Listening to you. Yeah, as I was saying, maybe Michael jump back on there. I don't know if we live or if we off the live. I see him. Or like Michael's back, it looks like. Yeah, right, yeah. as I was saying, I saw a video today in Tobago, and a young man, Jerome, was crying with a mixture of emotion of hurt and anger crying, looking at a man on the ground who had just been murdered and calling him the boss. And the emotion and the anger you could hear, one could only tell, because even as a young male, he hasn't been taught to have a level of emotional intelligence, that the only way I can tell he will heal is to seek the revenge of the dead body on the ground. And wow. though he may well know that that man may have led him to do things that could cause his life to come to an end soon. I ask myself, what does that man do for him so much that he has that deep-seated love for that gang leader? I have seen young boys as young as 13 burn their parents' house to the ground for the gang leader. And it is because the gang leader understood, because many times he was the boy before, eh? So he understood what the boy craves, what the boy needs, what the boy desires, that he's not getting in home, that he's not getting in school, that he's not getting from society, that he's not getting from state. And he would try to supply it to them, to him, just to win over win him over to do what he wants him to do. All and right, he, let me sorry, sorry, I don't want to cut you, but I see Dr. Jerome Tiloxing who is the founder of World Day of the Boy Child, 
that has been in celebration since 2018. He's on now. Let me just ask him to put on his camera so that we can now interact with him also online. All right. Good evening, Mike and Rondell. Uh, let me just apologize. My camera isn't working. Okay. I could I could switch computers if, and I could come back in if you want the camera, right? Well, well go ahead for, for now. Probably while um, Rondell is speaking, then we, we could switch. have you. Sure, no uh, problem. This switch. Yes. Um, welcome, and we appreciate having you on. And we want to thank you so much for um, conceptualizing this world day of the boy child. Right, right now, what we're talking about are some of the um, disadvantages that the boys are going through in society. And uh, Rondell Field was sharing that a number of scholarships and training are being preferred for girls while leaving the boys out and i don't believe he's saying that the girls shouldn't get it but he's saying mm -hmm. that the boys should also have it equally where, where I, do you stand on that i fully agree with him and you see it's it's not something that has been happening recently eh? for the last three or four decades 40 or 50 years ago the united nations has put aside funding for women and girls believing that there was a need for equity and equality. And what happened was that they moved ahead. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of progress amongst women and children. And the men were left behind. The boys were left behind. So if you have a project and you ask any United Nations agency for funding, it will not fall in their remit. Mm. Once, it's, once it's for boys or men. You're correct. Once it's for boys and men, the United Nations agencies cannot help you because there's mm. no sort of funding for boys and men. And funny enough, um, I've noticed too that when we ask governments in the Caribbean for funding, sometimes they would say, well, um, they have no money allocated for that. Right? Mm. So they, they put aside money for funding shelters, NGOs run by women, um, domestic violence shelters for women, but they don't have that money put aside. And every year in the budget, they don't put aside money to help us. So we have to help ourselves. We get crumbs from the table. Would you, would you believe in for International Women's Day in government offices? It's a big splash. And yeah. money spends like rain. And oftentimes, when you ask those same departments for International Men's Day, they say they have no funding. There you go. It's, it's so a, it's so I could attest to, to that fact. For sure. Or if you get it, it is very lackluster. Yeah. Mm. And last minute, too. Yeah. All right. And, and, and it's amazing, eh, guys, because the very places you speak of, the ministries, part of their population, amen. Part of their leadership, amen. Part of the cabinet, is, amen. Part of the political parties, amen. So it it, it 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 surprises me the boards so or some of the these authorities on these boards. Amen. So why are men in certain levels of authority also casting blind eyes on the men in society? So we have to hold those men in authority responsible also. I I agree with you. I agree with you, and. I think what mm. happened is that... Well, I'm... you know, um, gentlemen, one of the things that we'll have to admit... Mm. Mike? Mike seems to be going again there, Gerald. Yeah, I think he might have switched off his microphone there. All right. I, I, are you all there now? Yes, yeah. yes, we're hearing you. One of the okay. things that you talk about that men are sitting on these boards and, and so on and not pushing it. We have found that there, and it is it is evident that a mm. number of men in the presence of women are afraid to stand up on a point that defends men. So they're almost afraid to come up against the the the, the eye of a woman or women in particular. Mm. So they pander to to saying the kind of um, conversations and and narrative that would fall in their favor. 
Um, and so until we have the kind of men that can be able to say, listen, this is just fair and equitable for men, instead of having to pander in, then, then we're going to continue to have this. Correct, Mike. And, and the thing is, is this, I, if there are people of that nature there, whether male or female, they shouldn't be. Right. Um, I see um, mm -hmm. somebody asking whether there is any, Lyndon Jofield is asking, is there any domestic violence shelters for men? So before we, we go to that, let me say, eh, there are certain terms that we use that are supposed to be generic terms that are really specific. Domestic violence, when you go out to do a domestic violence workshop, it is always mm -hmm. generally violence against women. When you talk about gender-based violence, one would think it is or violence among the, between the genders, but it is usually violence against the female gender and not sure. generally violence in general. So that's also an, another thing. But he's asking whether there's any here. Wandel, are you aware whether there's any domestic violence shelter for men? No, far from. Nothing pertaining to domestic violence. As I said, it's not it's not we we don't we don't anticipate domestic violence to be anything related to male other than a man being the perpetrator. We haven't gotten to that position as yet. I mean, even if you look at the the, the advertisements coming from the TTPS, from the 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 gender-based violence unit, you will see the man as the perpetrator. Even when they're talking about elderly abuse, the man is the perpetrator. Well, in many cases, of elderly abuse, many women are perpetrators to their, to their mothers and fathers in the home. But when you see the depiction of those things in even our advertisements on television, it tells one story. When you're talking about come to the gender-based violence unit, there's an advertisement that the child inside and daddy have a big fist like this and mommy now come in a, in a, in a corner covering. So men, even when they face these challenges, they won't look for the gender-based violence unit because it hasn't depicted or hasn't told them that there's a place there for them. Mm. So, so psychologically, we are saying that they, we are telling people that there is no space for abuse men, that domestic violence men are not victims of domestic violence of any form nature, intimate partner violence of any form, fashion or nature. We program Did boys and think so. Did you notice recently, just this week here in the news in Trinidad and Tobago, we are all aware that if a woman reports a man abusing a woman, the police is going to show up at the door and evict him out of the house, almost without any question, right? right. We had a recent case where a passerby, a pedestrian or, or, or a, a civilian saw a woman of choking a child and abusing the child, and he recorded it. And the police said they have not done any arrest because nobody was willing to come forward, even though they have the video. Nobody was willing to come forward as a witness. Michael so Stewart. who was the witness when, when the woman called and said a man was beating me? Where was the witness? All right. You see? And that is the inequity. And when you ask yourself, why is there such a high suicidal rate of men? Probably the men are giving up because they can't get justice in this in the judicial system. They're not getting governmental backing. In the home, they're not getting any backing. So where do they go? But I will add to that. That is why murder suicides increase also. Because that feeling of lack of justice that have driven you at a point to take your own life some men wishing to make justice in, in error, we would say, but still trying to find their own justice within themselves, sometimes make the mistake of taking other lives with them. Because mm. if you've got the strength to take your own life, I can guarantee you there's nothing that would roll your hands from taking anybody else's. So I would add to that. So that is why... Any state must be concerned when they see the suicide rate high of a particular member of the society. This is all right. you have walk into places and schools, pick up firearms, kill everybody and kill themselves after. Mm. Um, and, and doc 
Mike. That scenario you put, you pinpointed there. There was a mm. case at the time before the gender-based violence unit where a young lady, what I highlighted it, we got custody for the father. The man and the woman were separated. The young boy went with the father for a, 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 a beach house vacation for a weekend with his new lover. The woman left the man and went with another lover. She wanted to find out who the man's new lover was, the mother of the child. Video chat with the father, choking the son and slapping him consistently. That is something we highlighted. It went viral. So much I remember took, that. We took the video evidence to court and got the father custody. The gender-based violence unit up till today, nearly a year and a half, is telling me they're still doing investigation. Same thing, what you are saying. They have nobody to come witness. When I give you the video evidence of the woman abusing the child, video footage, so much that the court could have used that to make an emergency order, they can't charge with that. Right. Let me give you another one. And I want the doctor to come in on this. That I've known of men who have been put out, as we said, because of claims of abuse, even though there's no evidence of it, but claims of it. And it put out, I know of a particular case where a gentleman in the house, he has been abused by the woman who was in the house. He went to the police and asked, I would like the woman out of my house. I have gone through too much of it. You know what the police said? They cannot move her. He has to give her three months to find a place to live because it mm. is only fair that she, she finds a place. He Sorry. has to give her three months more of to stay in this situation of abuse. But if a man is going through, the, if a man is claimed to be abusing a woman, he has to leave immediately. So where is he going? You see? That was That's cool. inequity. Doc, weigh in on our thousand, please. Well, Mike, what you just said there doesn't, doesn't sound strange. And let me tell you something. Sometimes men don't want to commit suicide. They don't want to commit the murders and they end up as vagrants, homeless persons on the street. They get a nervous breakdown. Some of them go to St. Anne's Mental Hospital because they cannot take this stress. You know, um, I, I am sure half of the, the vagrant population is because of these scenarios where the policemen laugh at the men. They call them Makome men, you know, they, they ridicule them. And they have this status where the woman now have the rights. She never contributes anything to the house, nothing in the upkeep of the house, but suddenly she has a right to the man's house. And it's something global, eh? And you see what it's you almost an investment now by some women. Correct. It's an correct. investment to go with a man who has a house and yeah. then fall out with him. Correct. Yeah. And then she bring she bring in one one or more men. But let me say that in India, there's a rise in the number of cases of false rape. Eh? So women are also making that claim and the judges and the court system sides with the woman immediately. Mm, yeah. So I, I don't the, know. Yes, yeah, so go, go ahead. Sorry. No, you in, go ahead, Doc. I, I mean, in the court have... of public opinion, the man is always wrong. Mm. And, and I think this has to change. And you know what is so sad is that Sometimes the judges and the jury know that the man is correct and they still go in favor of the woman believing she's the bearer of the child, she is kinder, gentler for some strange reason. Right. Well, I will let Rondell talk about how when sometimes they give the woman custody and the kind of dangers that the child is ending up inside of, of that. But I want to share this one where um I, i'm dealing with a particular gentleman and he says that the woman comes in and hits him cuffs him and while she is hitting him she's screaming eh? yes, so that the neighbors will hear so that the neighbors will hear uh, uh -oh. and she is t recording the audio so that mm -hmm. she can now take it so he came to, to, to me and he said boy this is what i'm going through and I don't know what to do because I can't I can't defend myself because nobody would believe me. I say videotape it, but don't let her know that you're videotaping it. So he videotaped it. She did not know that he videotaped it. After she did the abuse and screaming and so on, she called the police for him. 
The police came. And she claimed that he had been hitting her. There's no marks on her. He was able to show marks on himself. And then he showed them the video. They ended up arresting her and taking down to the police station. I think it was for wasting police time and a number of other charges that, that, that she ended up getting. But, yes. but, but she, he had to produce his stuff. Yes, go ahead. The, only, the reason why she could, they could only arrest her for the wasteful employment of police time is because some of the same things we've been saying for them to put these fabrications, we've said for them to legislate it, particularly when it alludes to a sexual offense that has been fabricated. Because what is false appears so right in the court, in the public court of opinion. Eh? So mm. even when you exonerate yourself legally, socially, you're still left wanting want to know. Yes, people yes. Still say, rape the girl. People still saying you interfere with your daughter. People still saying some of these things when these nasty fabrications have been levied against you. And until, and, it, and you see, the reason why it should be legislated because there are people that are really being raped. There are children that are really being abused. And when we have these fabricators being allowed to fabricate with no consequence, it makes the situation even for them even harder because now we are getting so accustomed to these fabrications. You first thing you're asking yourself, after you see a scenario like that, Michael, every mm -hmm. time somebody comes to you now with lodged in your mind, I wonder if she's lying, boy. Because mm -hmm. fabricators have been allowed to do so without consequence. Yes, and yes, yes. Some of the things we've been talking about, they put, we have allowed culture and personal bias to destroy even leg good legislative works and policy after people sit on and draft it. We have allowed that to destroy it. And we have to realize the dangers in that. Even when it comes to the, the, the look at when we talk about public assistance, where, where there was always the opportunity for males to get public assistance on behalf of their children when they're in a needy position. It was a culture, the culture yes. possibly run by a permanent secretary at the point in time that said men couldn't get it because they are the breadwinners. That caused many a young girl and boy who were children in their father's care who was going through some level of poverty to be refused. Even though the legislative work or the policy work was there saying that they could get it. We see the same thing with the court. The court says it's in the best interest of the child. They must serve the best interest of the child. But because of our social perceptions and our cultural biases, we are making court orders where, it's, where we have statistics to show that in 66% of the cases, when the man and the woman are both applying for custody, both being no trip to the child, what happened the financial competence to take care of the child? 66% of the time, only because of gender, the mother is given custody. 32% yes. of the time, the father. And 2% of the times, they give them shared care and control. Whereas in situations like that, 98% of the time should be shared parenting, shared control, care and control. So mm. I am showing where there is good law, Michael. And based on social perception, both based on cultural bias, we abuse the, the even the legislative works that are there. Right, 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 right. Um, boy, I tell you, um, and there, there's so much that probably this is a way to make people sensitive and aware as to what's going down. And we talk about the social services. I support having to support people who are in a situation of destitution. But some people are now making it an investment in the social services, right? So they, in one case, there's apparently, when a woman says she's a single mother, that now becomes almost like a resume. That becomes part of, of her a profile that, that she, she uses. And I think it was $500 that a woman will get for a child if she does not have 
a father. She's a single mother. So now, apparently, some women are making it their duty not to identify a father, not to have a man. So even though the man wants to be part of it, she distances herself from him so that she can get the $500. A woman met me one day, and she said to me, um, I don't even know who the, who the woman is. She just walked up to me and said, hey, you know, Mr. Short, you know, my daughter, um, I have grandchildren now. Um, I, so I congratulated her. I said, yeah, but I'm happy to hear this. She said, yes, yeah, she had twins. I said, oh, I've always wanted twins by myself. And I, I started to feel happy for the lady, whosoever she was. And then she said, but one died. So that kind of dropped my spirit. And I said, uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that. Accept my condolences. She did not hear me say that because she went on with her conversation and said, but I tell her that is a $500 she lose. So all she had to do, if she go and make her next child, she'll get back to $500. Because it's $1,000 she would have gotten for the twins. So yeah. now, she as a grandmother did not even sympathize, no more, no grieve. While I am there telling her how sorry I am to hear that. She passed that and say she lost $500. And she can get it back if she just um, hurry up and get pregnant again. That has to be madness. While there might have been a father who wants to be part of that child, who the court system is not going to give, and who she will deny that he, um, and many times some of them lying that they're not getting support when they are indeed getting support, yeah. unfortunately. And, and that is the culture, the passage of the culture we're talking about. The mother would have said, first things first, you and the man have one disagreement with the child. Put him in court. And when you put him in court, put him in maintenance one time. Don't waste time to go back. That is how mm. the culture has to know. Instead of the mother saying, hey, wait, March breaks. It don't make sense. You go to court to fight for something or they could work out. This is all your child. Try to be amicable. Try to this. That court is not the right way. But the automatic response is payment court. And that is because the court has done poorly and given a bad public perception that if a mother comes to court, she will win automatically. If the mother stood the chance to lose, or mother no father. Yes, yes. The true interest of the child would have been sought. You would have seen a lot less people going before the court, and a lot yes. more parents co-parenting and working things out amicably. But they see the court as a trump card. Get a vaccine. Let me go and carry for you up for maintenance. Nobody should have that level of authority to know for sure. I often tell people, and this is. We piloted this at the Joint Select Committee, Michael, and they promised mm. to have it legislated that before any maintenance order is made, there should be opportunity tests. We are in an age where we are opportunity testing. No man knowing the consequence of non-payment for maintenance is imprisonment should have to face the risk of being imprisoned for a child he does not know is a paternal child. Mm. Wow. Doc, what, what, what do you have to say, Doc? Oh, sorry. I have two things to say. Mike, uh, I yes. want to add to something you had mentioned earlier about the abuse of men. And I think what made it a critical global topic is the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp issue. Yeah, 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 yes, yes. You know, that Amber Heard thing where he she abused him regularly and he taped it. So I think, you know, that that made it a reality before male abuse by women was seen as a myth. They were seen as a very small minority, non-existent. But what this Johnny Depp did now was made it a reality. Um, a lot of the movies on Lifetime, the Lifetime cable channel, the men are portrayed, they are demonized, they are portrayed as perpetrators. So I'm glad that we are dealing with this topic here. I want to mention that... Um, Rhonda just talked about paternity, and I think this should be a man's right. The government should have legislation and should also fund this, where if a man is questioning the paternity, there should be a DNA test immediately, and the court has to enforce that. It's not like the woman can run away and say she don't want to take the test, right, and mm. keep the child. Now, what I yeah. have noticed is that men who cannot pay 
alimony. Men who are before the court who cannot pay money to upkeep a child, they are sometimes thrown in jail. Golden Grove. They are put in jail with the hardcore murderers and killers. And when they come out, they still cannot pay because they have no jobs. Nobody wants to hire them. And they go back into the system. And they become hardened criminals too. So I think we also have to look at the way in which the courts are not lenient for the man who is underemployed or unemployed and cannot pay for the upkeep of a child or children. And he's forced into this prison system. Correct. And I mean, if I could chime in there. Isn't that a travesty of justice? Because as you're talking there, as I have shared that some of the islands that I visit to, I go to the prisons and there was one particular island that I went and visited the prison. The gentleman has been in prison and it's not the first time I've been meeting with him and chatting with him and working along with him. But here's what he said. He gave me the date he was supposed to be coming out of prison. The mm. date was approaching and he was told that he cannot come out of the prison because even though he paid off the, the, the money <laughs> that he was supposed to be paid, while he was in prison, he accumulated. Mm. So now he has to continue to stay. While the, the system kept him incarcerated that he could not pay, and now that his family paid it all, he cannot come out because he, he accumulated some money. But his family no, has no more money. And I'm saying, mm. couldn't you have, this is not a criminal. Couldn't mm. they use these gentlemen to do work along the, um, whatever work that government has, pay mm. him a certain amount and garnish part of it to pay for the monies that he owes while he's outside doing, be, being productive to the very nation? And, and here is Mike. Here is Mike. That is something that used to occur in Trinidad and Tobago before. But, and maybe it exists even in that other Caribbean nation, examination of Section 27 of the Family Court Law will let you know that, in, at least in Trinidad, that if you are crew maintenance while you are in prison, the state is to be held culpable eh? because it is illegal for to do. And I remember before we highlighted that, that for years, men, maintenance was occurring against men while I was incarcerated, even though our laws of our land said that it shouldn't. In our wow. laws of our land, the same family law, Act Section 27.5, says that the magistrate has the power to see and perceive if a man has not willingly been negligent and if he has not willingly been negligent, he should not or must not be committed to prison. No. So the magistrate still has power, even if you bring him before her and say, hey, we're taking him to jail. They say, because of what has happened to him, the law has given me power to section 27.5 that he not be in prison. No, no. And okay, I well, I, I, was, I wasn't aware of that. Listen, Michael, I have seen them use it. In instances when fathers have brought mothers to the docks and the mother, this particular mother, they said because she was a mother and she had children from another relationship, that it didn't make sense to have her imprisoned. And she was owing the man nearly $90,000. And here the nice part, that man was owed $90,000 by her, but he had another child that he was owing $10,000 for. This is a true story, eh? Mm. And that same judge he came before sent him to prison. We had to have a barbecue. The man was a police. His name is Corey Francis. We had to get a barbecue to pay to get him out of prison because he had right. the other dependents in his care that the other mother didn't pay maintenance for. And I tell you again, the bias in our society, at same, same magistrate, you know, who set the oh. other woman free, send the man to jail. And this is real life things happening in our children, in our country. We have section 27 2 a that they could utilize in the family law, where they could see shuttles, they could seize goods, they could do any, all these things. And parliament would have, who would have drafted the law then, 
drafted it in a way where imprisonment seemed to be the last resort, you know. So there are it's as, things... So it's, it's as though there is a, a system schemed to incarcerate our men? Correct, because the laws... If you look at our laws in Section 27, you would be surprised to see that even if after the man fails to pay, they, they have given the magistrate power. Even in instances when the man loses his job, they have given the magistrate the power to suspend maintenance and revive it anytime again, Section 21 too. So the problem is the magistrate's not following the law. The lawyer, sometimes these men go and get, if they can afford a lawyer, don't know the laws to bring before the magistrate. So the easiest thing is what they keep doing, Section 27 2B and Section 27 3, send him to prison. There was one that you did, um, Grundle, where the gentleman was had got a heart condition, he was diabetic, right. and so he could not work because he, he just Mohammed. was not able to. Yeah? Mr. Hansen Mohammed. 20% uh -huh. of the man had. And here the thing about this, eh? let me tell you all how that case unfolded. They removed the case now, right? Well, they, well, they, well, they, just, they, just explain it to them first before you go into the case. Right, okay. What are that condition. one? He was, well, he, he has total kidney failure. He's on dialysis okay. and lives on 12% of his heart. So he had continuously asked the mother to come with him to the court and have the maintenance stop so that he could, she could then see to go to social services to see if she could be put on a grant because of his health condition, because he is on a disability grant. However, the mother refused and took out a warrant. He was brought before the court. When he was brought before the magistrate, the magistrate herself, who clearly had to not be knowledgeable of the law, said, he said, ma'am, even when I brush my teeth, I just have problems sometimes. I cannot work. She said, you could sit down in our office somewhere and pick up her phone and answer it still. That is not an excuse. Which is crazy because anybody knows if you are in a disability grant and social welfare gets you working, they will take the grant away from you. That yes. is what the law says. You cannot earn more than $12,000 a year. That is the wow. law. So the magistrate who should have a knowledge of the law was the one encouraging him to go to work to lose the grant that he is getting. When we publicized it and people saw how inhumane the magistrate was and inhumane the mother would have been to take out a warrant for a man in such a condition, the mother reached out to me and at that point in time said, Mr. Fields, I want to go and remove the maintenance because I am getting social welfare for the child already. Could you wow. believe that? Wow. She was already correcting social welfare. Yet still, the man being brought before, the, running a risk to be imprisoned, to be incarcerated. Right now, Mike, I have a man that is going to surrender to me. The man for the last year is hiding, hiding and living in the bush all over the place because he is afraid. He was afraid to get arrested for maintenance. He was arrested while he was at work and lost his job earlier last year or so. And from the time he came out, he hadn't been able to get a job to pay off the the to pay off the um the normal the maintenance. warrant, and it became a committal warrant, which is when they catch you, they carry you straight to jail. So because he couldn't pay it off, and the warrant became a committal warrant, he has since then been in hiding, and he is going to now surrender himself to me on Monday because he realized living his life in the bush and hiding and making sense. So he prepared to go and make the jail and then come back out and try to start back fresh. But as you said, the man was working and now trying to take off the money that he was owing when they imprison him. This is why I continue to say, if you can take a man who is accused of rape, put an ankle bracelet on his feet and put him on bail back out into society, why can't you do the same for a man who is owing maintenance? Put him on a curfew if you have to. Put an ankle bracelet on his feet and leave him employable so that he could pay the money. It makes no economical sense. If maintenance yeah, is yeah. the extra financial contribution from the man, why are you imprisoning him? Why are you in jail and the state mining him for $30,000 a month? 
The child not getting any money. And the cost you have to pay in order to keep them inside of the jail. $30,000, the AG said, for a salary a week to mine them in jail. A month. And, and he owes 10000 <laughs> He owes 3000 sometimes 4000 Nonsensical. Wow. And him in jail to criminalize him. Because when he comes out and he know, he knows that here we're going on, I will not be able to pay the next set of maintenance coming because I'm unemployed. You know what it does tell me, Michael? We just vault everything in prison to begin with. We worse than the rapists. And when we come out, the owner income, you know what it is encourage some of them to do? Hide the guns. Hide the drugs. Because police are looking for them. Them is just maintenance men. Some of them does encourage them to take drugs to other countries like mules. To England and these places, we go, we go, okay, we go, 20,000 and you could, you could keep that to pay any other warrant. Because here, yeah, Mike, remember, the police could, you could have four warrants outstanding and the police serve two, eh? Mm. So when you come out, there are two more waiting to send you back in with, you know? Mm. That yeah. were accrued before you went in. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Doc, anything you, you want to add? I just wanted to say, you know, since I grew up and I small, always hear about men having to pay maintenance, but I don't hear about women having to pay maintenance and I warrant out for the woman. Mm -hmm. If it's equity, I think the woman should have a little warrant for them too. They, they just had the warrants, Doc. They just don't arrest them. I am <laughs> they, can't, they, they can't locate them. They cannot find them. When, and Mike, when they find them, I tell you, just bring them in the docks. And right. they don't send them to prison. Very, very rare. Yeah, yeah. But you see, let me tell you, and it comes back to the boy child. Once <laughs> a father is absent from the home, his father is in jail, and the father <laughs> is out working three jobs, two jobs to try to pay maintenance. He's not there. The boy doesn't have a role model, and he turns to the gang leader. Correct. Mm. Right. And he cannot turn to his big brother because his big brother already have one foot in the gang. Right. So I think, you see, everything is connected. This child maintenance is connected to the absent father and it leads to the boy growing up wayward and growing up to be a social problem. Right. And we're not, we not connecting the dots, you know. We believe that a problem child, a, a problem boy child, a boy child will grow up to be a thief or a bandit, a murderer. We believe he grew up in a vacuum, but it's all connected. Correct. And and and, and another dangerous thing is psych the psychological infiltration of the young boy mind too, you know. Yeah. Don't come out like your father, you know. Your father mm. never mind you. Look your father never care about you. Look your father running home day, he wouldn't bring nothing for you. And sometimes it's is the furthest thing from the truth. Look your father can even pay maintenance. I will make him get locked up for spite. And yes, the young yes. boy grows hating manhood, you know. He grows yeah. hating the, 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 the projection of what his father is. And he only wants to be everything beside the father. So he could tell himself, I want to own before I turn a man. I want to bring in a dollar. I could do anything. So when the gang man gave him a gun, or the gang man tell him, watch the block to start at 12 years old. Guys, what has happened, man? Give him a walkie-talkie. And tell him when the police come in, and he come and he hit him a little 200 for that. And he said, boy, I could go and buy something for mommy and give she daddy. Don't give she nothing. My father is always. I had to look out and watch my mother back. And then he come later down the road, 13, 14, the gun. The, the gang man gave him the gun and said, go and take that man. Go and rob that man. Or go and bring that fella for me. And he started to get comfortable. And it started to be his source of income. And he started to get street cred. And they gave him a nickname called Monster. And he become the monster, they call him. The next thing he's going to do is gun down a man. Mm. And by the time he turned 20, the last gang leader dead, and he's the new boss. The new bosses, when we go in them crime and communities, brothers, I will tell you as youth men, eh? 23 years, 24 years, sometimes when they bring the boss to talk to you. Is that a little boy? Let, let, let me just, you know, we have so much going on on the social media with comments here. I, I, I apologize to you all. I cannot read all of them because of the number of comments coming through. But uh, Davika Sami, 
says, do men apply for maintenance when they have the children? Is it because men believe they are not entitled to get financial support? You would see less men up. We just tell men, we tell men, make sure and apply if you need it. Make sure and apply for maintenance. It is your right. But yes, that's a good point she made. There are in some instances, plenty of men can say, hey, most times when you see a man goes to court, he wants access of his child. He wants to be in the child's life. 90% of the times you would see the mothers going to court, they want maintenance from the man. 90% of the times. But in every instance, I would see there's a particular magistrate that adjudicated that was, was feared in Tobago. You understand? He's now in, 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 in Trinidad. I, want to, I can't call his name. But I've seen in instances where he is accustomed to levying great amounts of maintenance upon men. Upon men. In a particular case, he gave the man pittance. You understand? And say, well, boy, you got to woke up to make it work like so I said. The woman thinking, if it was a man, this is what he told him. He said, if it was a man, I could have tell she get her next job. You understand? So he had to take what he get. So as I said, the cultural bias exists. But the law still stipulates that if any custodial parent applies for maintenance, they are to receive some type of maintenance. But you find that the, the women, the maintenance orders are, are, are lower when they don't pay. And if people investigate, and I want us to do a study of that, Michael, I wish we get the funding of maintenance generally. I Where are we getting the know. funding from, boy? I don't know. They, well, I ask the IGDS and they tell me pay for it. You understand? <laughs> so am I working on that just now? Eh? Because my strong belief is, Michael, when we do that study, we will realize that women who have to pay maintenance are worse at paying maintenance than men. I run a little cell all that. Eh? I am going to see. I am going to see God get the nation, and I am pretty sure we will see what that statistic looks like. Women who have yeah. to pay maintenance. Don't... Um, a man had um. There was a story in the newspaper some time ago. Um, the, the man went to pick up his child because the school overed early. And so he went, he had to leave work to go and pick up the child, but he's not finished working. So brought back the child to the workplace and the management told him he cannot bring the child to the work. But yet it is every day, women leaving and pick up their children in school and bring back to the workplace. Mm. Now that he has done the same thing, they said he cannot do it. Mm. Those are the kind of inequities and it, on the, the, when we're talking about equality and all of that and so on, where, where is it? Yeah. And so I wanted to know whether that establishment did not recant on their position that yeah, they had originally. My yes. girl, the statistics of men committing suicide, they just really stated again, Ministry of Health, 84% four out of every five, they say. So it means for them to say 84 is a little oomph over the four, every four out of every five. A male. In the last three weeks, Michael, we had five men kill themselves. Yeah, I have yes, videos yes. of some of them. And long and short yes. of this story, I am saying, if women were killing themselves in record numbers like this, the United Nations would have flying with funding or some kind of thing. It would have been a big woman's agenda. It would have had billboards. Imagine the murder rate of men. Men are 90.6% um, 2022 and 2023, 90.7% out of the murder victims are male. Yet you will pass and see a sign about ending violence against women. And you will never see one about ending violence and murder against men. And men are the greatest victims of murder. Hmm. Because they, I think they would say because the men are the greatest perpetrators of the murder. And that makes no difference. A life is a life is a life. Right. So, so the, as, far they, as far as some of them is, let them kill out themselves. We can kill out themselves. Long and short. And not every people feel the people seem to think that that out of that 90.6%, that the over 50% is gang related, you know. Many of the men there is because of, they get robbed and killed. Not they had no gang affiliation to you know. Or they were you are saying, you know, repeat that again. You are saying what? 
I am saying that when you look at the statistics, though the majority are murdered by gangs, what I am saying, a great percentile, between 30 to about 40 percent are not gang-related offenders, you know. Had no, okay. the, the murders had nothing to do with, with the gang relation. So 40 percent is still great. Right, because some of those home invasions where a 70-year-old man is killed of and all kind of thing. What gang is he in? Of course, the, the male perpetrator is less compassionate to the male victim, you know. When he enters the home, he may spare the woman and children, but he will condemn the man. The yeah. first person he apprehends and restrains are the males, you know, because they see the males as opposition. Look at that policeman who that he's no gangman. The policeman who just get killed in the bar. He's not right, a gangman. Right. But the first persons, the, the first persons a male perpetrator will see as a threat to him. Is a male he's coming to do something too. So many men are killing that way too. So it's not only gang-related murders of males. Wow. Boy, mm. we have plenty work to do. Plenty, plenty work to do. I'm hoping that we're going to have more of this type of program. If probably at least once a month we could start ventilating some of these things um, and make people be aware of what it is. Because a lot of times, many people not aware that they have a brother, they have a son, they have a cousin, somebody who, while we be making old men to be such villains, that person may be related to one of you. And when we leave this unchecked, and then years down the road, your son is in danger. Yeah? So, um... Thank you all very much. I think we've come to the end. So let me just give um Doc, let me give you a final word and then I'll give Randall Fees a final word as we close off. Right. I just wanted to say that I'm glad that we're having this discussion because a lot of the, the men who suffer from trauma, it's because it was unresolved when they were boys, when they were teenagers. They were neglected, marginalized, they were abused, victimized, stereotyped whilst they were boys and they entered manhood with all these crosses to bear, all these burdens. You know, it's no fault of your own, societal expectations, distortions. And I also want to say that what we also need to explore in future episodes, future shows, is the way in which the North American media, North American ideology, has been influencing boys and teenagers. You all might know that right now, boys are confused sexually in America. Some of them identifying as a cat or a dog or pig. Yeah. And yeah. we need to look yeah. at that too. The way yeah. in which we have um, no longer two genders and the, the Caribbean yeah. boys are becoming confused. So I think that has to be a well ventilated and well discussed and it should be a bit controversial too. Bro, I like that kind of controversy. Worthy controversy. <laughs> well, well, you know the developmental age of when a boy hits adolescence, it, it according to Erickson, the Russian um right. psychosocial uh, as we were taught, when you reach a certain age of adolescence is where identity versus confusion takes place. If you mm. can't find who you are, mm. confusion follows. And so therefore now we have I am I am currently um doing counseling with people who are homosexual, lesbians, and so on. And some of them are actually telling me that they, they are actually confused mm -hmm. and beginning to question whether this is what they really want. But mm -hmm. one of one of the things, you know, one of them admitted they felt that they got caught up with the fact that you're hearing so much about it and you're seeing it so you think it is the in thing but they know that they want they're settling down and maturing they say no it doesn't feel normal it doesn't feel natural to me mm. so boy i tell you but thank you all very much um Ronald, you're final finally i'm, I'm in my guy i want to say thanks again for the time and I want to again echo and i will be echoing this from this year straight until next year 
I want men to take stock. I want you to remember, particularly of you um, in Trinidad and Tobago, we are on the horizon of a election year. And I am calling on every man. I do not care about your race. I do not care about your political persuasion. That you or we together must stand and ensure that opposition, government, or any intended party that wants to govern us must put what is important and in place for our proper survival as males in this society. Do not sell your vote for nothing because the person in power is of your race or looks like you. Ask them, what are you going to do for men and boys? Are you going to continue leaving boys out of programs like ICT, uh, ICT for girls and ICT STEM creation for girls and all these things that they're coming up with? Are we going to not say that we deserve opportunity leave? Are we not going to continue to fight for them to have some social strategy in place for our men who are, for our brothers who are struggling and taking their lives, for our men who are committing murders and being victims of murders committed. We as men have to maybe flex the only muscle that we have remaining in society, and that is our vote. And I am telling men, let us make our vote count this 2025. All right, boy, I tell you, you guys come out strong, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, serious, right. serious time. yes, 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 yes. All right, thank you all very much. And again, you'll hear more about us. Um, and this discussion is going to go on more frequently. Um, mm -hmm. and so we say it is World Day of the Boy Child today, Dr. Jerome Tilok Singh, the founder. We're happy mm -hmm. to have him on. Um, and also Rundle Fields, um, founder of Fathers Association, and I'm ambassador for the World Day of the Boy Child. We're going to continue that. So let's hear the, go, leave with a song uh, by Ted Jones and Cheryl Reese concerning uh, men, um, the theme song that we have. Bye. See you. Bye, guys. You've been tight with for standing up against the harmful stereotypes that have been perpetrated against the men. I come here to represent myself and a few. We're living in a century where we're living on lies. Society said the hurdles and we have to comply. We don't pay with news, we don't get reviews. Not for we get broken and we fall into the news. But this year, all the brothers said we're gonna take a stand. Representing hope, revealing the brand. We're gonna take a brother hand in hand. Empower, elevate every boy, every man. Learn me. I just want. Where we living on lies Society 